And we invite you to stand as you are able as we hear the gospel reading for this morning. The gospel is taken from the 10th chapter of St. John. These are Jesus' words. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we bow our heads in prayer together. With a mother's love, compassionate God, you care for us and you shepherd us. You are our gate. You nourish us with an embrace of holy love that surrounds us and forgives us and encourages us. And you set us in families where guidance, wisdom, and acceptance may abound. And you call us into families of faith where our spiritual roots grow deep and strong. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the chance for us to come and be together and pour out our hearts in love to you and for one another as we gather. Thank you for the gift of life and how much of that is wrapped up in the word mom. We pray for all who carry burdens on this day or who might feel left out or who might need healing or comfort or who simply want to say, thank you, Mom. We ask that you bless us all. And we ask that you move in our midst with our speakers this morning. We pray this all. In Jesus' name, the Good Shepherd. Amen. You may be seated. Well, again, happy Mother's Day. I don't know if we've said that yet, but it's Mother's Day, so we wish all of our mothers a very, a very happy day. Um, I just have to uh, maybe publicly give thanks uh, for the woman in my life who is the mother of my children and. Uh, for all of uh, the work that she does in, in, in my household. She's actually being a mom this weekend as she is uh, with, uh, with uh, the boys uh, this, this weekend in, in the cities. But just a shout out for her and to say thank you for everything that, that she does uh, for us. I just want us to think about moms, and uh, you're going to be... I think, well, you're always happy that you've come to worship, but you're going to be especially pleased today that you've come uh, to worship because we have some speakers uh, that are in different stages of motherhood that are going to speak uh, to you, to speak uh, to us. Um, and it's God speaking. It's no question. They spoke at our first service, and it certainly was God uh, speaking through them. So uh, we just uh, uh, thank them uh, uh, for their service to the church, but I want you to do what I want you to do now is I just this can be a hard day for some of you. I realize, I realize that. But what I want you to do is I want you to uh, put a picture of your own mother uh, in your minds right now, and some of you might uh, just look to the person next to you and have a nice picture of your mom. Uh, some of you might have to look into the depths of your memory to get a picture of your mom, and it might be helpful to close your eyes to do that. But um, I just want you to think of your mom and put the picture of your mom 
in your minds and in your heart as we on this Mother's Day uh, give thanks uh, for all of our mothers and how God has guided them and shepherded them in uh, the work in the service that they do for you, for us, and, and certainly for all of our children. Praise be to God for our, for our mothers. We're going to invite our speakers to come out just as I offer a few reflections, and so we're going to invite Bethany to come, come forward and our other speaker, uh, Sharon, and we'll introduce you. But as I was uh, thinking about moms, I just have this little litany for us um, We give thanks uh, today for our moms, for the gift of life that she has given us, for allowing her own body to become the shelter in which we were protected, through which we entered the world, for holding us and rocking us and singing to us the first songs most of us would ever hear, and for seeing potential in us and believing in us maybe when when nobody else did, for wanting something better for us. We give thanks today for our moms for being willing and able to endure our anger. We give thanks to our moms who had to discipline us so that we might become better people. Someday, kids, you will thank your parents for disciplining you. (laughs) Seems hard to believe. But today we thank our moms for that, for knowing our birthdays, for knowing our friends' names and our teachers and our favorite foods and our most cherished toys and possessions. We thank our moms for playing games with us. They really did not want to play with us. for watching television shows with us, shows that they really did not like at all, but they watched them with us, for letting us grow up and be distant and be moody sometimes and to make mistakes oftentimes. And maybe even when we moved far away, still always and forever cheering us on and for the tears we never saw, for the fears that we never felt, for the prayers that we never heard. We give thanks for our moms, for the heartaches that we never knew. We give thanks for our moms. Although it comes as all human gifts come in an imperfect package, we received one of the greatest gifts from our mothers you received one of the greatest gifts of all, and that is the gift of God's love. So let's thank our moms this day, shall we? And then as we, as we do that, we want to welcome Bethany. Uh, Bethany is in the category of being a new mother. Uh, uh, Logan is just four months old, and so Bethany brings us the perspective of a new motherhood. Thank you, Bethany, for being with us. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Um, When Pastor Kendall asked me about a week ago if I would speak, I looked at him and I just said, I I don't have anything to say. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) uh, Every day is such a learning curve, and I think as I reflected throughout the week a little bit more, I just realized how much that is such a God thing. He's working in us because I can't speak for everyone, but I don't know if we ever really know what we're doing as a mother. And so I think that it's been uh, interesting for me in my faith to see how God's been able to provide and to trust his guidance. And I know that that goes back even before Logan was born. We've had a lot of things going on this year, Jordan and I, and um, maybe the plans that we had and the plans that God had weren't necessarily aligned. And to see him provide and take care of us through these new steps has been um, just really powerful on us and in our faith. And so as I thought about what I would say or, or how I would share what it's like to be a new mom, I didn't really know what to say, but I had, um, written a blog when 
Logan was about two weeks old, and I just thought I would share that. And I called it The Life of a New Mama. I started it off with a quote by Rabindranath Tagore, and it says, Where have I come from? Where did you pick me up? The baby asked his mother. She answered, half crying, half laughing, and clasping the baby to her breast. You were hidden in my heart as its desire, my darling. You were in the dolls of my childhood games, in my hopes and in my loves, in my life, in the life of my mother, you have lived. My life has changed forever. I'm a mom. This is a new role, a life-changing role. Although I've lived a life full of love, I've never experienced this kind of love. I've been in love, I am in love, with a wonderful man. I've been blessed to have a family that I love dearly. I can't imagine my life without my parents, and I love and adore them very much. My siblings are my best friends, and I love them and the memories that we're making all the time. I love the closeness of my grandparents. I've always loved my aunts, my uncles, cousins, and other extended family members. Then I got married, and I inherited a new family to love. And I do. I have so many dear, dear friends that I love as well. My life has been full of love. But then he came. My dear boy, Logan Lee Wager, and my heart found an entirely new way to love. It does not belittle the love that I have for those previously stated. It actually probably magnifies my love for them. Because without my family members and my friends, my life would never have been complete enough to love him the way that I do. I am so blessed to have such great amount of love around me. But boy, oh boy, do I love him. I stare at him, and my heart overflows with love. I look into his eyes and my full freely with tears of joy and thanksgiving. His sweet and perfect face is mesmerizing. I hold his little hands, and I can't imagine the possibility that lies in them. <laughs> what will his life hold? What will he do? What will he be? What will he love? I indeed have loved, but I have never experienced this type of love, the sacrificial and life-changing love. He is our boy. I can't imagine my life without him, and I can't wait to watch him grow. I'm so thankful and so blessed to have been given this boy, just to love and to watch grow. And just when you think life can't get any better, and then it does. And I ended my blog with a quote by Pam Brown that says, no one understands how someone so little can change their world until they hold their baby in their arms. It's just been such a, a joy to be able to see God work through us this year and in our new roles, in our marriage, and as we watch Logan. Um, it's just been neat for us to see, and that was all I wanted to share. Thank you, Thank you Bethany. And Sharon Vick is our next speaker, kind of at a, at a different stage in uh, her, her motherhood. So Sharon, thank you for being with us. Happy Mother's Day. What does it mean to be a mother? Well, you're a chef, a nurse, a taxi driver, a psychologist, a peacemaker, a friend, a teacher, a role model. Mothers wear so many hats. I was blessed to have a wonderful Christian mother. My mom was a great role model. She set a terrific example of how to be a Christian mother. She was very active in her church. She shared the bounty of her large garden with family, friends, and neighbors. She raised her children with love. She expected us to help with chores whether it was setting the table, washing dishes, picking rocks, or milking cows. She expected us to do the best in all that we did. 
and to treat others with respect. We went to church every Sunday, and that's no small task for four children within five years of age. Motherhood has its challenges, but mostly it has its joys. Watching your children grow and change so quickly, so very quickly, from helpless babies to elementary, high school, college, and then on to new jobs and new places. Our own two children have gone past all of these stages and are on now on to their next stage. Our son John works for Trek and travels around the world, so he's very seldom home. Our daughter is in Wilmer, but she's getting married in June. Um, our children have become adults with lives of their own. Um, we don't have them around with us for every celebration and occasion. This is hard at times, but we know that they have others in their lives now. And you know what? We did that to our parents when we were their age, too. Many years ago, my mom hand-stitched this saying that I have used to, as a motto to raise our children. It says, there are two lasting gifts we can give our children. One is roots, the other wings. We want our children to have wings, but you know we really don't want them to fly away. We want them to be near us because we love them. But you know that's where the roots comes in. If we give them solid roots in faith and in family, they will use their wings with confidence, but they will remember their roots. When they are grounded in faith in God, they will know that they are loved and protected by their Heavenly Father. They will know that they can turn to Him when they have, wor <coughs> Excuse me. When they have worries and problems. When they are grounded in family, they know they are loved and can turn to their earthly family for love and support. Will we fix their problems for them? No, they have to do that for themselves. But they know that we will be there to help, encourage, and support them. Wings and Roots motto. It works. My siblings and I, as close as we were to each other, chose four different colleges and four different careers. But family ties are very strong. Our two kids chose two different colleges and certainly two different ways of lives, but they are grounded in the roots of faith and family. After my mother passed away, I turned to others for support and as a role model of parenting. My good friends were there for me to follow. As my children grew, I realized more and more that the community helped raise our children whether it was a Sunday school teacher, a volunteer in Scouts, or 4-H, or school, or a coach, or a teacher, or maybe it was just that person who noticed them and said hi and gave them that word of encouragement. You don't have to be a mother to have a big influence on children. By your actions, you make a difference. Perhaps it's through prayer, or encouraging them, or a smile. Don't underestimate your power. I want to thank all of you for your support <clears throat> in helping raise my children and other people's children. At a recent church meeting, we were asked what we thought our ministry in life was. I thought about that a lot, and I'm thinking perhaps we are all called to, be, to minister to children, whether they're our own or other people's children. They are all God's children. So, happy Mother's Day to all of you who care about and love children. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Bethany. Let's turn to our litany for Mother's Day that's printed for you in your bulletins. 
And then we'll call up our next speaker. Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank God for mothers. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank God for my mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on this earth, thank God for the mothers of the past. For every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now, thank God for the mothers of today. For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet, thank God for the soon-to-be mothers. For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care, thank God for the mothers who, with hearts so big. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on, Thank God for the mothers who are so strong. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own but choose instead to mother everyone else, thank God for the mothers in spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. Laurel Silvernell is our next uh, speaker, and uh, she's kind of doing... Uh, two things, offering some of her own reflections, but also reading uh, reflections that her own mother uh, wrote. Uh, uh, and you'll tell the story of your mother, Belle Fulton, uh, but I just need to say, uh, Belle is 102 years old, so there again, she is at a different uh, journey in her motherhood. So thank you, Laurel, for being here. Good morning, dear friends. My story today isn't about me as a mom, although I am one. It's about my own mom, Belle Fulton, and what it's like for her to reflect on motherhood and faith at the age of 102. I interviewed her this past week and found out things I may never have known about her philosophy, struggles, and how we have become a gift to one another. But first, some background. Mom came to live with us a little over six years ago. She had lived her whole life in northern New Jersey, a place long recognized as part of the metropolitan area of New York City. Life there was becoming too complicated. In Dawson, she has found peace, quiet, security, and the continuation of a faith community. But more about that move later. Mom's health is relatively good, although she becomes more frail each year and works to keep her weight of 97 pounds stable. Her mind is as sharp as ever. She reads voraciously a holdover from her career as librarian, conquers crossword puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, handles her own money, and talks politics with Vern. A small feat, I might add. <laughs> She's pleased to share her thoughts with you. She was here at the first service. Uh, it's quite a, quite a trek for her to come out these days, but she came and did what every mother does for her child, supports. <clears throat> this is the shawl she uses at home year-round to ward off the chill. Um, even when the rest of us are fanning, she has this shawl on. Today, each time I speak for her, I'll wear it. It might help keep the dialogue straight. <clears throat> I've had a lifelong faith, first instilled in me by my parents. It has been the constant underpinning of all my experiences. I don't know what it would be like not to know God. I know God cares about me and watches over me in my daily life. Perhaps with the help of a guardian angel, I know that things have happened according to God's plan. 
For example, the fact that Laurel and Vern are here for me now at this vulnerable time of my life. There came a day when I began to feel a strong pressure or pull to tend to my mom. I now pr truly believe that God was nudging me. On a trip to New Jersey, I found my sister Diane, who was looking after mom, her mother-in-law, and grandchildren, becoming completely overwhelmed. It was time for me to step up. At Vern's suggestion and continuous support, mom came to us. A short time later, my dear sister died suddenly, leaving us all in grief, but mom safe in Dawson. God working in our lives, no doubt about it. My faith has been such a part of me that I hardly think of it until it will pop up at the most inconsequential times. I awake early in the morning and do my devotions first thing. I look out my east window and some mornings witness a most beautiful sunrise. God's glorious presence touches me and I can't help but sing the doxology in my croaky little voice right then and there. I thank God for the gift of life every morning. In her younger years, my mom was gifted with a lovely soprano voice. She shared this by singing in her church choir most of her life, soloing frequently. She also sang at home during the course of the day, and I remember the warm feeling of that voice. She may call her voice croaky now, but I'm sure her offering to God continues to be received as beautiful music. I know that prayer works. God answers, maybe not right away, but in thinking back over my life, I can now see the results of all those prayers. I prayed for five years before my husband Frank and I became parents with Laurel's birth. Perhaps God is the best judge of timing after all. At my age, it is inevitable that losses pile up upon one another. I've never felt the need to dwell on these losses, feel them, oh yes, but I put my trust in God and forge ahead through widowhood, loss of family and friends, and increased vulnerability. I focus on what's going right. Good eyesight, hearing with the help of the audiologist, and the ability to walk. Family continues to uphold me. The worst thing that has ever happened to me is the death of my daughter, Diane, three years ago. Losing a child isn't in the natural progression of things. Losing a child, no matter what age, tears into a mother's heart and leaves it tender for the rest of her life. My comfort comes in believing that she watches over me. I think of her every day, even yet and talk to her, and thank God for the time I had with her. In summing up these many decades of faith, I can't say there's been any great epiphany or life-changing depth of devotion. I've simply lived day by day a Christian-based life. I have become comfortable, very comfortable, wrapped in the shawl of God's love. Thank you, Mom, for sharing yourself today. Diane and I have had the best mom ever. I love you. <laughs>